Welcome to our daily devotion. The Methodist Church of Barbados invites you to sing, pray, and worship with us as we declare God's glory and celebrate His mighty acts. things you do. Jesus, your love's amazing. Oh yes, you give me purpose and you made me new. Where I am, I am because of you. Jesus, Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for all of the blessings that you continue to bestow upon our lives. We thank you for loving each of us and for calling us to walk with you. We come before you, dear Lord, as we meet and declare our dependence on you. We ask you, Lord, to be a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. Fill our hearts with your love, Lord. Fill our words and conversations with truth and grace. Father, Lord, we thank you for sending your son, Jesus Christ, to die in our place and to pay the price for our sins. 
We can never offer enough thanks for your grace, mercy, and love. We, do, we want to serve you with all that we have. Lead and direct us, dear God, in the way we should go, today and all days. We want to serve you and your kingdom, Lord. Father God, we thank you for impacting our lives and, and our purpose with your truth. Open our eyes to see the opportunities around us to serve you and to grow in your blessings and favor. We believe and trust your word, Lord. We want to grow in you more and more each day and to understand your promises for us. We commit our time together to you and ask that you heal and restore us as we dive into your word. Father Lord, we want a deeper faith. We want to meet with you and know you better. So today, Lord, we say yes to what you want to show us as we hear your word. Dear Lord and Heavenly Father, you are the author and perfecter of our faith. You save us and sustain us. Help us, Lord God, to trust in, your, in you and to worship you whether we have little or plenty. May our prayers bring you glory and remind us of your promises. We love you, Lord. We seek your presence and we worship you alone. Heavenly Father, we come before you, laying down our pride and arrogance and confess our need for you. We lay our needs at your feet and worship you alone. Without you, Lord, we are nothing. So teach us, dear Lord, how to worship you in all transparency. Fill us with your spirit as we open our mouths in praise to you. Lord, you have told us in your word that you hear our prayers. And so we are crying out to you. We are humbling ourselves before you and seeking your face. And so we come to you, dear God, as a people, as a Christian people to seek you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
119, verse 66, and verse 125. I begin. Teach me good judgment and knowledge, for I believe in your commandments. I am your servant. Give me understanding so that I may know your decrees. The word of the Lord. Oh Lord God, we just want to know you tonight. God, we want to come even to a new level of your presence and your glory. And God, our prayer tonight is teach us your ways. Lord, we want to know you. We want to live in your presence.
Good evening, brothers and sisters in Christ. The devotion this evening is entitled Spiritual Gift of Discernment, and the guiding text is taken from Psalm 119, verse 66, and verse 125. Let us go to God and pray. Gracious and Heavenly Father, we wait to hear from you. And so decrease us and increase you, that the words of my mouth and the meditation of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Someone I know recently expressed an opinion that surprised and in some ways disappointed me. I said to myself, I thought he would have, have more discernment than that. The experience caused me to reflect on the importance of discernment and the lack of it in our world. We know that people often do not see issues clearly and are easily misled because they do not think biblically. However, sadly, one cannot help reflecting how true this is of the church community as well. True discernment means not only distinguishing the right from the wrong, it means distinguishing the primary from the secondary, the essential from the indifferent, and the permanent from the transient. And yes, it means distinguishing between the good and the better, and even between the better and the best. Brothers and sisters, thus, discernment is like the physical senses. To some, it is given in unusual measure as a special grace gift, and we see this in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 10. But some measure of it is essential for us all and must be constantly nourished. The Christian must take care to develop his sixth sense of spiritual discernment. This is why the psalmist says, Teach me good judgment and knowledge. The nature of discernment. But what is this discernment? The word used in Psalm 119 verse 66 means taste. It is the ability to make discriminate, discriminating judgments, to distinguish between and recognize the moral implications of different situations and courses of action. It includes the ability to weigh up and assess the moral and spiritual status of individuals, groups, and even movements. Thus, while warning us against judgmentalism, Jesus urges us to be discerning and discriminating, lest we cast our pearls before the pigs. Matthew chapter 7, verse 1 and 6. A remarkable example of such discernment, my friends, is described in John chapter 2, verse 24 to 25, and it reads, Jesus would not entrust himself to them, for he knew what was in a man. My friends, this is discernment without judgmentalism. It involved our Lord's knowledge of God's word and his observation of God's ways with men. He supremely had prayed, teach me good judgment, for I believe your commandments. In Psalm 119 verse 66. Doubtless, his discernment grew as he experienced conflict with and victory over temptation and as he assessed every situation in the light of God's word. Jesus' discernment penetrated to the deepest reaches of the heart, but the Christian is called to develop similar discernment. For the only worthwhile discernment we possess, my friends, is that which we receive in union with Christ by the Spirit through God's word. And so a discernment is learning to think God's thoughts after him, Practically and spiritually, it means having a sense of how things look in God's eyes and seeing them in some measure uncovered and laid bare. And this is referenced in Hebrews chapter 4 verse 13. But what is the impact of discernment? How does this discernment affect the way we live? It affects the way we live in four ways. Firstly, it acts as a means of protection, guarding us from being deceived spiritually. 
It protects us from being blown away by the winds of teaching that make central an element of the gospel that is peripheral or treat a particular application of scripture as though it were scripture's central message. Secondly, discernment also acts as an instrument of healing when exercised in grace. I've known a, a small number of people whose ability to diagnose the spiritual needs of others has been remarkable. My friends, such people seem able to penetrate into the heart issues someone else faces better than the person can do. Of course, this is in some ways a dangerous gift with which God has entrusted them. But when exercised in love, discernment can be the sur surgical scalpel in spiritual surgery that makes healing possible. Thirdly, again, discernment functions as a key to Christian freedom. The zealous but undiscerning Christian becomes enslaved to others, to his own uneducated conscience, to an unbiblical pattern of life. Growth in discernment sets us free from such bondage, enabling us to distinguish practices that may be helpful in some circumstances from those that are mandated in all circumstances. But in another way, true discernment enables the free Christian to recognize that the exercise of freedom is not essential to the enjoyment of it. And fourthly, and finally, Discernment serves as a catalyst to spiritual development, my friends. The mocker seeks wisdom and finds none, but knowledge comes easily to the discerning. And we see this in Proverbs chapter 14, verse 16. Why? Because the discerning Christian goes to the heart of the matter. He or she knows something about everything, namely that all things have their common fountain in God. Increasing knowledge, therefore, does not lead to increased frustration, but to a deeper recognition of the harmony of all God's works and words. So, my friends, how is such discernment to be obtained? We receive it as did Christ himself, by the anointing of the Spirit, through our understanding of God's word, by our experience of God's grace and by the progressive unfolding to us to the true condition in our hearts. That is why we should also always pray, I am your servant, give me discernment. Psalm 119 verse 125. Let us pray. Almighty God, we ask you to give us spiritual understanding and wisdom to discern the things of God we pray. For it is our desire to know the truth you have promised to everyone who trusts you as Savior. Lord, give us discernment, we pray, so that we may be as wise as a serpent in the midst of this dispensation. But also, Lord, give us the gentle spirit of, of Christ, that the love of Jesus may show forth in our life as we seek to walk worthy of you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
Thank you for being a part of our daily devotion. We trust it has been a blessing to you. Now together, let us hold fast to his word and may it dwell in all of us richly.